Hi, welcome to Freezer Meals 101. I'm Christy. And I'm Sharla. And today is all about ground beef. Ground beef, ground beef, <laughs> ground beef. <laughs> so we love when you can save a ton of money. We really do. By doing freezer meals. It's, it's one of the things that kind of drives us because we hear from you about how much money your family is now saving by doing freezer meals and it it gets us excited it does get us excited like we have had this freedom for and i mean when i say freedom it's not just the money there's time freedom involved there is the overwhelm right like i never have to really worry about what's for supper yep. uh, because i can just take something out of my freezer because we are freezer meal aficionados <laughs> we've been doing this for a while um but yes that is a huge part of it is skipping the drive-through, not throwing granola bars at your kids in the back seat on your way to soccer practice because you have actually been able to just have a quick meal at home because it's already in your freezer and it's already ready to go and it's healthy yep. and it's it's done for and you. And you can take advantage of the sales which is what today is all about. It's really true. Because no matter how inexpensive that sale is on ground beef, it doesn't do you any good if you can only buy enough for one or two meals. Or even if you can buy some extra and freeze it, you might not use it before it goes bad. You might It might get freezer burned because it's in there on its own. Like there's yeah. lots of factors here, but if you can take that ground beef that you found on sale and turn it into freezer meals, you're gonna use it. You really will use it. And let me tell you, the recipes we have for you today, they're all ground beef recipes, they're all different. There's an incredible amount of variety happening here. And that's kind of the tip of the iceberg. On our website, in our club, we have a lot of ground, a lot beef, of recipes. ground beef recipes. Um, it could be called, uh, instead of Freezer Meals 101, it'd be 101 things to do with ground beef. Totally. We should write a book called 101 things to do with ground beef. It's uh, The chicken, we could do the same, like 101 chicken recipes. Like it's totally true. true. And in our Freezer Meals 101 club, you can just click a button that's like a ground button. beef, and then all of those recipes will populate. So we're just giving you like a little smidgen today mm -hmm. because we don't want to overwhelm you. And uh, we sometimes do the mega session marathon freezer meal things that we do together. Yeah. Um, where we do videos of those, and some people love them, and some people are like, "This is overwhelming. I could never ever consider." Like, it's right. It's true. And so we're just we're just helping you dip your toe in today. We dip your toe. We don't want to freeze you out. <laughs> No, that's right. That's it. That's why I said tip of the iceberg here. So yes. we should just get into these because they Absolutely. are really good. The first one I'm going to tell you about, I'm telling you about it first because we had this for supper last night. Yeah, that's right. And um, my, she was just telling me. Yeah, my brother-in-law and sister-in-law happened to be over. I didn't know they were coming for supper, but I had taken this out in the morning as the freezer meal that we were going to eat that day. And so when they kind of stayed longer and longer and we were having a really nice visit, then I'm like, oh, I'm going to feed them, like, or I'm going to offer to feed them. And I was like, well, it's not the fanciest, but it's really delicious. <laughs> so anyway, I, um, you know, I invited them to stay and it's a good thing that none of my kids were really, well, only one of my kids was here over supper time yesterday and because... The five of us demolished this. Like my brother-in-law and sister-in-law both had thirds. So I would say they're fans. I would say they liked it. <laughs> I would say they liked it. And we have liked this meal for a really long time. I've been making it since the first year that I was married, which was a really long time ago. <laughs> um, <laughs> but and I, I found it as a skillet meal in this little cookbook, the kinds that you could get by the grocery store checkout. Mm -hmm. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. And then I adapted it a few years ago to be a freezer meal. Mm -hmm. So it's changed a fair bit from what it was originally, but the flavor is still there and obviously it's still good. So this is our garden taco rice. In your large freezer bag, you're going to put a pound of cooked ground beef. Now, if you're making a whole bunch of ground beef, beef recipes all at once, then what we recommend that you do is just keep a one cup measuring spoon in your ground beef because one pound is going to equal 
two and a third cups of cooked ground beef. So it's super easy to figure out how much one pound is. You don't need to take out your kitchen scale. You just scoop those cups into your freezer bag. And then you're gonna add some chopped onion, some taco seasoning, chili powder, some cubed or sliced zucchini. Now, if you use sliced zucchini, you're gonna to wanna to slice it fairly thin. Some rice that's been cooked and cooled because you don't want anything that is still hot to go into your freezer bag or you're gonna get condensation and that will lead to some problems with the whole freezing process because it can contribute to your freezer burn. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that both your ground beef and your rice are cooled. Some corn, a can of green chilies, and diced tomatoes. You're gonna to squish that around in your freezer bag to combine it. Get out the excess air because that's the other thing that can cause freezer burn is air. And you're gonna seal it. And then in a small or medium size freezer bag, you're gonna put a cup of grated cheddar cheese or you could even use a Tex-Mex or nacho blend cheese and you're gonna seal that one and staple the two bags together above the seal so you don't get any holes in the bag. And then on the day you go to cook this, you're gonna thaw it and dump the large bag contents into a skillet. Just stir it around occasionally to heat it through. The ground beef's already cooked, the rice is already cooked, so you're just kind of allowing that onion to soften a little bit, the zucchini to soften a little bit. Really, you don't have to cook it very long at all. I know because last night it was probably 10 minutes start to finish. Oh, isn't that the best when you have company? Oh, it's amazing. And I didn't feel rude that I'm cooking while they're here because it was so fast. It was so fast. And, and you're not missing any of the conversation. Totally. That's so nice. And then you top it with that cheese that you've got in your other bag. And I put a lid on it at the end there and turned it off just to allow the cheese to melt on top and serve it. We like to have it with some hot sauce, but you know, you do you. <laughs> so because you're doing all ground beef meals mm -hmm. and all but one of these requires your beef to be cooked before you add it into your freezer bags, um, what we're gonna do is obviously set some aside for any recipes that you're gonna make with the raw ground beef, so sometimes you wanna make some meatballs or some meatloaf for those kind of things. Mm -hmm. But for anything else, you need your beef to be cooked. So if you're cooking large quantities of ground beef because you found like the sale of the century. It's true. <laughs> and sometimes you do. Or you buy it by the case, which you can do. Yes. Then what you're gonna do is you can brown it either in your slow cooker, in a roasting oven. Now roasting oven is not our favorite. We've tried it. We don't recommend it. I think it would have it. succeeded if it didn't get stirred to death. It got stirred to death in our Because I've done it in my slow cooker. Slow cooker is okay. Because I never touched it. Right. I, like maybe three times over eight hours that yes. I stirred it. The roasting oven, I stirred it too much and then it was like powdery. It was, it was powdery. It was bad. Yeah, it was. Um, that was a freezer meal fail. <laughs> it was a freezer meal fail. We don't have, well actually we do have them all the time, but we carry on and it was fine. We survived we and we, survived. it was a learning point. So now we can My tell you, survived. don't stir it to death. No. And but everybody was being helpful, right? Yeah, I mean my kids were like, every time they would pass it, they would, they stir, would stir it. stir it. And you know, so. Roasting oven eh, with the caveat, don't stir it too much. Um, slow cooker, definitely you can do okay. that. Or what I have taken to doing recently is I cover a cookie sheet with tin foil and then spread it all out on there. You use your little mix and chop, which we love, we love. to break it up. And then you cook it in the oven, you stir it maybe once and drain some of that fat and then put it back in. And then at the end you, you stir it when, you know, when it's no longer pink, you've got your cooked ground beef. So we have gone ahead and cooked all the ground beef ahead that we needed to have cooked. And then we've just got it ready for all these recipes. If you don't have a lot to do, the skillet is still going to probably be the fastest. Yes. And it is my preferred method because I find it browns. Like, it actually, you can brown your beef the nicest. It, yeah. nicest. It, it will crisp it up. So if I have like five pounds of ground beef, I'll still do it. If we're getting up to that eight to 10 pounds of ground beef, 
Yeah, totally slow cooker or the oven. This next recipe is chunky bolognese sauce. Um, it is like, kind of like a marinara, kind of like a red sauce. It's all of the things, but it's got the meat in it. And it is really good. This is something you can serve with spaghetti or like spaghetti squash or like, you know, the zucchini noodles that you can make the spiralizer and make them into noodles. So we're gonna, again, start out with our browned beef, one and a half pounds. Right into the bag, we're going to also add a diced onion, some celery. We're going to add in some chopped zucchini, minced garlic. Now we use garlic from a jar because we go through massive amounts of garlic doing all the freezer meals that we do between the two of us. So that just works the easiest for us. But if you want to press your own garlic, you feel free to do that. Nobody is gonna stop you. And I admit, yes, it probably is a little bit more flavorful, but we accept the trade-off yep. of the ease of using the jar of minced garlic. We're going to add in cooked and crumbled bacon. So cooking the bacon was also part of our prep in this one. Again, if you're doing large amounts, you can do two pounds of bacon on a cookie sheet in your oven. Then we are going to add in diced tomatoes, a couple of cans of tomato paste, two cups of water, and some Italian seasoning and salt and pepper. That is a lot going on in this bag, but look at how delicious it is. We're gonna close it up, we're gonna mix it all around together, lay it flat to freeze. On the day of cooking, you do want to let it thaw and get this one in your slow cooker. It should be four or five hours on low. If you're in a pinch, you can do it on your stove top, but you really want to cook it low and slow to get those flavors to really meld. Yeah, the last time I served this, I forgot to put it in my slow cooker, so it was just thawing, and then I got home from yeah. have some appointments, and I was like, oops. And so Whatever. it totally worked on the stove top pot. Of course. Yeah, of I mean, course you can. Of course. So this next recipe is really dear to my heart, and even though I don't eat ground beef, I still love making this recipe and my kids and my husband love eating it. Like, and so does love. our family. Like, it oh is my goodness. Top. It's so It's one of our top yeah. ground beef recipes, which is Yes. Do you know what it is? It's the gravy and the pickles. The <laughs> See? I said those two things in the same sentence. You I know. know. It's and totally weird. Beef. It, it's it it is such a weird one. So, this oh, one I got from my friend Kathy. Kathy passed away of cancer six years ago, so oh, that that's... Long ago. I know, it doesn't feel like No, it that really long. doesn't. It and really doesn't. She was a dear, dear friend, and our families, like, did family vacations together, and her four Kathy kids Kathy were... taught Charlotte how to camp. Yes, she did! And she taught you how to even eat outside on the deck. <laughs> like, Charlotte didn't do outside. She and now she hikes. She out of my comfort yeah, zone. Yeah, she did. And, yeah, and, yeah, her, her four kids were similar age to our five youngest kids yes. and so they kind of were raised a little bit like siblings because of all the family did vacations a lot of stuff together. and we did every new year's eve together yeah. and you know so we've got a ton of memories and and you know lots of so obviously this is dear to my heart um but i have to tell you the first time that they gave me this you recipe, showed it to me and you're I like, was like, this is so weird. I was making some freezer meals for her out of their like family favorite recipes yeah. and I was just like I'm gonna make it because like it says, but like, oh my goodness, this is so weird. And, and I even told Kathy, I was like, like, are you sure about like you actually eat this? Like, and I never, so it's called Kathy's Lazy Rouladen. And I had never even heard of Rouladen at that point, but I mean, it has pickles. <laughs> I don't even know what a Rouladen is, but I know that this is good. <laughs> so if you wanna try, and branch out of your comfort zone culinarily. <laughs> in your large freezer bag, add your ground beef, that of course is already cooked, and some minced onion, some bacon that is cooked and crumbled. So the great thing about this is that you just had a recipe that also called for bacon. Mm -hmm. So when you're prepping, you just make extra bacon. It takes no extra time. And then you've got these two very different recipes that both need the bacon, right? And where it gets weird, it deviates because I had you with the ground beef, the onions, and the bacon, right? Is the pickles. So you're gonna dice some pickles. And that's all that's going in your bag. So just four ingredients, 
Very, very simple. You're gonna take the air out, you're gonna freeze it. It's a really thin bag, so it thaws quickly. Mm -hmm. On the day you go to make this, you will make some gravy and you'll cook this up in your skillet and then you can make gravy either from scratch or from one of those packets. I have recently discovered that I can only How make gravy, gravy from packets. I had to text Christy. <laughs> Christy is my neighbor and, and, and we do first meals together. We talk a lot about cooking and stuff, so it's not unusual for us right. to text back and forth about food or recipes or whatever, but I had to text her and be like, in all of my entire life, I have never made gravy from scratch. And I don't have a gravy packet. And so it's I was funny. like, how do I make gravy from scratch? So she told me and I attempted and all of us were like, no. Like, <laughs> like it was like, it, it was, it wasn't bad. It was like no. the color was wrong. If you were making was, gravy like from scratch, from scratch, you will have beef drippings in a pan that are going to contribute to the color and flavor. Yeah, and I didn't have that. She wanted it for her mashed potatoes. Totally yeah. fair. Who doesn't love gravy with their mashed potatoes? That's completely fine. But we were having chicken with the mashed potatoes. so You shouldn't make chicken gravy. Okay, I didn't think of that. And it's okay. So I walked her through how to make a roux and how to add in the stuff, but it was very bland looking because there was no depth of color. How was flavor? Well, it was not good. It was it was like floury, like it you was. Didn't cook and it long so enough. then maybe. Well, I think we added more beef broth, and then it was better. Okay. Like double the amount of beef broth we had added. Ah. And so so that night I got a gravy packet like late. Yeah. And so the next day because we had lots of leftovers, I I added the gravy packet. <laughs> Oh, into the and gravy? And some water into the gravy. Or no, some beef broth and the gravy packet into the gravy. And then it was the right color or writer color. And, and the it, flavor was the better. The flavor was better. Well, I'm proud of you for trying. <laughs> and I had to learn. I did not make gravy the way my mom taught me to gravy. I, like, yeah. I had to relearn how to make gravy as an adult watching cooking shows, really. Right. And the other way was I have... I have a Pampered Chef cookbook that came with my deep dish covered baker. Okay. And in it has the best chicken pot pie I have ever, ever had. But it really does step by step talk about how to let that flour cook out and how to get to the right color and how long it takes and the little steps and where you want to add your, your herbs and your, your spices in, like your salt and pepper and stuff. And it was, it was good. So for this, whether you make your gravy from scratch, like Christy does, oh, I forgot about the recipe. or from a packet, or if you mix from scratch and a packet, like I did, because you're in a tizzy. Hey, there is room for every kind of cook in freezer meals. <laughs> there sure is. There sure is. So you're gonna serve this with some potatoes, or like some boiled potatoes, baked potatoes, roasted potatoes, mashed, mashed potatoes, and some gravy. Yeah. And I gotta tell you that sometimes this doesn't get to the point where I can make the gravy because as I'm cooking it in the skillet, my kids are like eating it with spoons. Oh, I <laughs> put in extra pickles because my kids and my husband will go by and steal the pickles and it's right. like, we should just start doubling this one right off the scratch. Seriously. It's, Double this one. Yeah. Quadruple this one. This is <laughs> Kathy's a stupidly lazy good water. recipe. Kathy's lazy reward. <laughs> This next recipe is barbecue meatloaf, and what my favorite thing about this recipe is that it comes right with the topping. You know, a lot of people like to put ketchup or barbecue sauce on their meatloaf after you've made it, and you know, you've sliced it up and it's on your plate. This one comes with a homemade barbecue sauce that you put on right before you bake it. And so it helps flavor it, and it also, it gets crispy and sticky, and it is really, really good. So we're gonna start out with our ground beef. We're gonna do everything in this big bowl. We're gonna add in breadcrumbs and graham cracker crumbs, which sounds kind of like an interesting mixture, but that sweetness in the graham cracker crumbs is actually really nice. We're gonna add in some evaporated milk, minced onion, a couple of eggs that have been lightly beaten, and a little bit of pepper, and probably the secret ingredient besides the barbecue sauce in this one is a package of onion soup mix. 
Now we buy ours at Bulk Barn, so we use three tablespoons because that equals a package of your onion soup mix. What's also nice about the Bulk Barn one is we can get it without the MSG. You know, some people have a sensitivity to it. So we're gonna mix all these together in the bowl. Listen, you can use your mixer, you can do this by hand, you can do this with a spoon. The trick is to just really get it all well incorporated before it gets too mushy. And then you wanna transfer it to really a large resealable freezer bag. When I first started making this as a freezer meal, I was putting it right into a pan and freezing it in the pan. But when you have this many freezer meals happening in your freezer, uh, space is at a premium. So we have adjusted this recipe to now do it in the bag so that we have a little bit more room in our freezer. Then in a separate bowl, we're gonna make the barbecue sauce. We're gonna just make it out of brown sugar, dry mustard, ketchup, and a little bit of chili sauce. Mix it well together, add it to a medium sized bag. So that's a quart bag. Remove all the air out of both of these bags, seal them up and you wanna freeze them. Make sure you're stapling them together above the seal line. On the day that you go to cook this, this is one that you definitely wanna let thaw all the way through because you have to get this into a pan because right now it looks like a pancake. <laughs> <laughs> and so you're gonna put it in a pan. I used to do it in a loaf pan, but honestly, over the years, I've started to use my eight by eight pan. I find that it cooks more evenly when it's spread mm -hmm. out a little bit better. Um, and it is also nicer with the sauce. This is the right amount of sauce for an eight by eight pan. Um, you wanna cook it for about an hour. You gotta make sure that that center is cooked through and there's no pink left. I have not checked the meat thermometer temperature of what a meatloaf should be <laughs> to be cooked through. And then um, serve this up. This is going to be great with, again, with potatoes. This is a really good potato video. Ooh, we have a garlic mashed potatoes recipe that you can make ahead as a freezer meal. Oh yeah, and you could. It's amazing. So you could have that in your freezer and take it out with any of these. Yeah. It's totally, and we have some sides. We have lots of sides yeah. in the club. And we do. lots that would go good with this too. Um, and this is always a hit. It really is. If you like meatloaf, you will like this one. If you don't like meatloaf, I mean, there's people that just don't like meatloaf. So I discovered fine. this year that my kids like meatloaf. Oh, that's his funny story. <laughs> I know, because uh, I have never fed them meatloaf. Well, now I feed them meatloaf all the time. <laughs> like, Christy and I recently made, actually, I'll put a, a oh, link put the right video there. Up. That's a good one. Um, I, we recently made 48 individual freezer meals for my son who's going to this like summer job and he's sort of staying in like a dorm type thing and yeah. so we made these individual meals for him and one of the things we did in there is these meatloaf muffins which is another one of our meatloaf recipes and the reason I did that is because I discovered that my kids love meatloaf but <laughs> how would I know since I wasn't feeding them a lot of beef in their life. I use veggie beef for a lot of these recipes you that we're do, doing today. You can't use it like raw no. beef. And so, oh, um, but, but one day when we were sitting down and we were actually, we had real meatloaf and one of our sons is like, meatloaf is my favorite. And I'm like, well, how would you even know? <laughs> and he told me like at one of his childhood friends houses, oh, funny. the mom would make meatloaf and he loved it. And then everybody around the table is like, can you make meatloaf all the time? Like anyway. And so Christy was really happy to hear that because now we're going to just put meatloaf it'll into go the into, rotation. It'll go into the regular rotation. Lots of times if we were doing like a mega session, we would either use, um, we would never make meatballs, almost never. It yeah. was always um, just purchased meatballs because they're already cooked. It's so easy. And when you were doing over 100 meals, you want it easy. Save time. Yeah. You want to save time. But if I was really craving homemade meatballs, I would make them ahead of time before that mega session. And I would do the same thing for the meatloaf. So that totally happened. But yeah. now... Now, now I can put in a request and say, I would like to make meatloaf this time. Thank and I'll you very have much. to actually ask. <laughs> because you have people to eat it. Totally. It's true. So for those of you that don't know, because I know we're talking as if you know this about us, but you might not know. So if it's your first time here, welcome. We are neighbors, like we said, and we have gotten together for over a decade every three months to make three months worth of freezer meals for both of our families. So we got so good at it. We decided to teach you through YouTube. 
and it's awesome. <laughs> it is really awesome. So we'll put a link there to one of those videos of uh, one of our mega sessions, which are, you know, two day marathons of over a hundred meals. Um, yes. Super fun. And that's what we mean about putting the recipes in the rotation. So they go into those mega yes, sessions. Good and, yeah. These beef and bean burritos we also made for my son yes, we when did. he went away because beef and bean burritos are perfect for teen or young adult boys. <laughs> they really are. They're a great midnight snack, they're a great after school snack, and they make a great meal as well. So we have gone ahead and browned some ground beef and added some taco seasoning and a little bit of water into that just as if you were making taco meat. So onto your flour tortillas and we use the burrito size flour tortilla, which is not really a surprise since they are burritos. burritos. Um, you're going to add some refried beans. We like the spicy variety because we like things spicy, but you can use the regular if you prefer. And then some of that seasoned ground beef, some red pepper that's been diced, green pepper that's been diced, onion that's been diced, finely and then you're going to wrap that like a burrito now christy is the one that does our burrito wrapping because she is an expert because she learned it when she was working at subway a long time ago and so you wrap it like a burrito and then you um, wrap that in foil individually and then you're going to put those into your freezer bag and freeze them on the day that you go to cook these, you can either microwave them, obviously taking the foil off first, very important very step. Very important, please do. <laughs> <laughs> or you can place your burritos in a baking dish and bake them in the oven for half an hour. And if you want, if you've done them that way, you can top it with lettuce, cheese, sour cream, guacamole, salsa, those kind of things. And then you have like a full family size meal or you can keep them in the individually wrapped foils for just your take out one at a time kind of quick. They're great for if you have to, have to take a lunch to work. Perfect for that, so there you go. Our lasagna soup recipe is kind of a little bit famous. It, oh my gosh, it kind of even is. It is so, it's like restaurant food at home. It's it is so one of, amazing. It's one of my favorite things to feed family. It yes. feeds large groups of people. It's hearty, it's flavorful, it's all the things. It's fancy and yet homey at the same time. How yes. can it be that? But it is that. It is so true. So normally when we make this lasagna soup, we make ours with ground sausage. That way I can make mine with spicy ground sausage and have it be even more flavorful. And Christy can make her families with the mild Italian sausage, or there's like an Italian flavored Italian sausage, which sounds funny, ah, but it's like, yeah. it's got some extra seasonings in, in there. Yeah. And so we usually do this with Italian sausage, but little known fact, you can substitute ground beef for that Italian sausage. Yeah, and you absolutely can. It actually does say that in the recipe, so it's not that little known. <laughs> <laughs> we, just, I, we just seldom make it with the ground beef. Yes. We just, and the link for this recipe will be in the description below, but, and then you will see that it clearly says you can use either. So into your large freezer bag, you're going to add that ground beef or the ground sausage, some oregano, basil, minced garlic, red pepper flakes, salt and pepper, bay leaves, fennel seed, nutmeg, and a diced onion. You're starting to, to get the idea of why it's so darn flavorful. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Then we're gonna add some fire roasted tomatoes, two cans of those, some tomato paste, and you can add beef broth now, or you can add it on the day of cooking. The reason that you might wanna add it later is because if you're running out of space in your freezer, your bag will be thinner if you add the broth on the day of cooking rather than adding it now. But whatever works best for you, you're going to get out the excess air, seal it, and freeze it. On the day that you go to make this, you're gonna thaw it, put it into your large stovetop pot, or you could do this one in the slow cooker if you prefer. And then towards the end of cooking, you're gonna add in 
five broken lasagna noodles. We've done a lot of experimenting with this one, and we know that five is exactly five the, is amount the perfect you want. amount. Six makes it a little bit too uh, too thick. Yes, and four just isn't quite enough. Exactly. Five is the right amount. And then you're gonna add some Parmesan cheese and ricotta cheese right into the bowl on top of that. And that's the part where it just becomes like something you would have in a restaurant. It's super elevated. Now, little known fact, but this one isn't in the recipe. You can freeze ricotta cheese. Yes, you can. And ricotta cheese tends to be a little bit on the pricey side, so you don't wanna get that whole container and only use a little bit of it. So you can freeze it, you can freeze it in ice cube trays and then pop those out and put them in a freezer bag, or you can freeze it just as is. Or I would even go further and separate in one cup and put it in a medium bag and attach it. And that's something we haven't done in the past. We haven't tried that. Because sometimes I'll go, I don't, I'll, I don't often have the ricotta cheese at home. Mm -hmm. um, and so I go to pull this one out and I really want it but it's so much better with the cheese. Oh, it's, it is. And so I put it back and then I have to go write ricotta on my list. And then the next time I'm at the grocery store, I buy the ricotta and then hope that it, I can use up my freezer bag before it goes bad. So I think the next time we make this, I think we need to add this to our next mega session list. So that we can try it out and just see. Because we can buy, ricotta. we're gonna make four of them when we make it. So we buy like a lot of ricotta. We can buy, the larger ricotta thing, mm -hmm. or two of them, and Divina. separate it. Yeah, I like that idea. Okay. Yeah, that's my idea. See? You are witnessing history. We're making decisions We're, on the fly. We, we are. We just have to talk it through sometimes. This last recipe is a fairly new one to us, and it has been such a hit. Totally. We made it in that last freezer session, freezer meal session with the 140 oh, freezer Oh, yes. Meals. We'll put the link up. And actually, the first night, it's a two-day session for us because it's a lot of meals like we're we're super women but we are not like <laughs> you know super women um so we have it I, I ended up making it here at Charlotte's right there and I <laughs> phoned my family and I'm like okay I made supper it's over here you have to come over here and eat you have to and walk so, over. so they just walked over and had it and it is really delicious now we have not altered the recipe to include the garlic but my experience in that moment was that maybe garlic could be part of this recipe because my husband <laughs> put a lot on. Yeah, we are adding garlic to the recipe. We always tweak our recipes before they make their way into the club or onto Absolutely. the website. And this was our first time trying it. Yeah. And it was totally a hit. We start out with our ground beef in our bag. We're going to add in minced onion, diced tomatoes, green chilies, some water, some chili powder, and some salt and pepper. Then you're going to mix that around, get all your excess air out, and seal it up. And then in a second bag, we're going to add one cup of long grain rice. Now, if you don't have rice on hand at the time, you can do this on the day of cooking, but you are going to cook the rice in the meal at the time. So you will, that's why there's so much water in there. You'll see what happens here. So on the day of cooking, you're going to defrost it. And this one would be one that you would need to totally completely defrost. And then you're going to mix that cup of rice right into the meal in the casserole dish. And then you bake it at 375 for one hour. Optionally, we thought about maybe adding some corn to this one. Now it isn't, it's called chili casserole. It isn't like eating chili, it's just chili flavored. Um, and so it, it could also be something that we want to sprinkle some shredded cheddar on when you make it. It would be really good. Both of our families really liked this one. Like mm -hmm. we said, it's pretty new. And it's not spicy. If you're worried no. about the chili powder or the green chilies, it isn't a spicy one. It's just flavorful. And it's simple. It's very family friendly. And we felt like, you know how we're talking about, we could add garlic, we can top it with cheese, we could add a can of corn. It's like, a little flexible, right? That's how we felt about it. Okay, hold on. Simple. It's, it's not one that you're going to serve to your finest Yes, but you could have but, served this for yeah, supper last night yeah. instead of the garden taco rice and totally. they would have totally eaten it up just the same I think yeah it is that good that's a lot of variety for just using ground beef it totally is and so you've taken advantage of your sale you've got a lot of variety you've made seven meals if you bought enough ground beef you have doubled them so yes. you have 14 meals really that, that is, is two weeks that's two weeks 
but you don't have to cook. Maybe you're going to want to spread those out. You don't maybe want to eat ground beef every single night, but do you know what you do? You start watching your flyer because there's going to be a chicken breast sale coming up or there's going to be, you know, a pork chop sale coming up and you can do the same thing. You can go into the club, you can click the pork button and bam, you have all these recipes for whatever you want to supplement totally your freezer meals and we are planning a video for you on chicken breast recipes for that sale on chicken breast so that'll be coming in a week or two so just watch for that but in the meantime i'm going to put a link right there to another video with chicken ideas so that one you can use when you see a sale on chicken whatever you got your sale on your chicken and then you've got your sale on your ground beef and then you've got a, you throw in some seafood pork vegetarian meals in there and suddenly you've got a month or two of meals and, and really well rounded and you have saved a ton of money <laughs> and you're not hitting the drive through like we want this for you because we live like this and we love it it saves us time it saves us money it saves us that overwhelm we want this for you and we love hearing how it's transforming your days so thank you for all of those comments and emails we really do love them. we really do love them and thanks for joining us Happy cooking.